Good morning, folks, and thank you, Hubble. We'll start with the tip of the hat to the new Electric Universe theorists, a string of stellar brilliance in a near-perfect helix, evenly spaced over a 100,000 light years. That's purely electrical. On your mark, Thunderbolts, ready, set, go. A fireball streaked across the sky in southeastern Australia last night, but it was not wholly unexpected. It took the track of a Russian rocket booster meant to be space junk and then to have an illuminating return. Now I'll get a little angry. Our government will do anything to push its own agenda when it comes to global warming. Now all you have to do is go to my channel page, find the climate change playlist, and you'll know why climate change is absolutely real, but also why the projections of warming have failed for two decades. One of the most damning pieces of evidence is Antarctica gaining ice so fast it makes your head spin, but is indeed melting from the underside, which they blame on the ocean that ate their global warming and caused their predictions to fail. Meanwhile, they still haven't put underwater venting or volcanoes in a single IPCC climate model, despite find after find of such mega heating truly taking place beneath the only parts of Antarctica that are actually melting. Boom roasted. Only noteworthy quakes of the day took odd locations rather than high magnitude. We still expect an uptick in the next 36 hours on the magnitude side of things. Been quiet for days. This is another successful Uyen storm formation, and this one is not heading north but due west towards the Philippines, which per our July 5th discussion with Dr. Uyen could be the quake trigger based on past observations. That line indeed crested Australia overnight, it's a pretty long convergence. Meanwhile, New Zealand still looks wetter, but at least it's not Antarctic air. In Europe, we see a lot of moisture ready to drop, but the worst of it should be along the convergence amplified by a reinforcing eastward drive. It's the North Atlantic low spinning counterclockwise above the high pressure cell to the south spinning clockwise, and they both push east at their meeting place and force that moisture to slam against another high pressure cell to the further east and make our storm convergence. In the United States, it's this simple yet again. Up goes the heat, up goes the moisture, and then tonight, down come the storms, widespread, up into Canada as well, and beyond just those top watch zones. But folks, we're about to see something very different coming. That northern low, it's going to get stuck in the northeast for days, and as it does so, its massive size will bring with it very chilly air, all the way down into the United States, from darn close to the Arctic Circle. As our upper atmospheric flows like the polar vortices lose tight coiling due to lack of flaring, they will wobble and come down like this time and time again. Earth saw its third gamma burst in less than 36 hours yesterday, this last one coming out of the Perseus constellation. Solar wind is steadying nicely and doing so in a fairly normal range. Geomagnetic situation is quite calm. Flaring did get back up into M range once last night it was mostly a surface event. The sunspots are either large but decaying, turning away from Earth, smaller and still decaying, or they are shifting around without any solid magnetic mixing. I'd even say it's a surprise these guys popped a flare at all, although not as surprising as the silence of the departing groups. Some vindication, I won't name names of those who said the solar pole flip happened months ago and had also claimed it months before that, but Stanford is now updated and as of late June, it's definitively not done flipping. North needs to be positive on our star this coming cycle. Negative coronal hole Earth facing down south. Supermoon on our doorstep and a bottoming out of sunspot numbers. No big quakes for days. Should be changing soon. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.